Hi everyone, welcome to this new video from Not Real Engineering. And in this video, we are going to discuss how to use equation constraint in Abacus CA. We will see this with example. But before that, let's briefly talk about what is equation constraint. It is a type of kinematic constraint, so something similar to contact. And using this, you can define a relation between degrees of freedom of different nodes. There are many scenarios where this is useful and one out of that we are going to discuss in this video which is modeling of RVE. Now the obvious question would be what is RVE? RVE means representative volume element. If we have some structure which is periodic in nature then a small part of that structure can be used to represent the entire structure. As you can see in this example we can create this entire structure just by repeating this small cube into specific region. That's why this is called RVE of this entire structure. This is used in many many cases, especially modeling of composite materials where we don't model full composite part, but we take a small section of that part, which is called representative volume element of that composite. And then we simulate just that RVE. And while simulating that RVE, we use something called mixed boundary conditions during which this equation constraint comes handy. So let's move on to the example. Here is a very simple RVE, which is a square with a circular hole in it and we want to apply uniaxial tensile load to this RVE. The mixed boundary conditions are to ensure that the response of this RVE under tensile load should be similar to response of the entire structure. For that we will use roller support on this left edge, roller support on the bottom edge and when we do that the node on this corner will be automatically fixed. Hence there will not be any rigid body movement. Then we will apply displacement boundary condition of 0.3 millimeter on this top surface. You might think this is enough but if we simulate this what will happen is because of this hole over here this right edge will not be flat the left edge will be flat but the right edge will become something like this and this we don't want because we want RVE to represent the entire structure and we should be able to do that just by repeating the RVE hence if you repeat this RVE over here on the right side you will get something like this there will be some gap over here because left edge is flat but the right edge is not flat. When we repeat it on the top, there will not be any issue because the bottom edge and top edge both are flat. But when we repeat on the left or right, we will find some gap and equation constraint is used to avoid this gap. How can we do that? We want this edge to be always flat, always perpendicular. And that we can do by creating two sets. One set will be all the nodes on this edge except the corner one and the separate set will be just the corner node. We can think of this corner node as master node and all the nodes on this edge will be follower nodes and we can define an equation constraint between these two which will ensure the displacement along x axis for all the nodes on this edge will be exactly same as the displacement along x axis of this master node which is given by equation over here. In Abacus if you want to enter this equation you have to rearrange the terms little bit. Hence in Abacus terminology, it will be written something like this. The set one is follower nodes and degree of freedom one is the displacement along x direction. Then set two is master node. And again, DOF one is displacement in x direction. And we have to take all the terms on the left side. Right hand side should be always equal to zero. And once we have that, we have to fill one table like this, which will enforce this equation. Now let's solve this example in Abacus CAE. And I'm going to use very simple material model with Young's modulus of 100 megapascal and Poisson's ratio of 0.47. I'm using this because we are applying a large strain which is around 15% so that we will see this dip clearly over here and that's why I'm using polymer as the material. So let's start with Abacus CA. First always set your work directory and then let's start with the part. This is a 2D part and I will change this size as well to 20. Say continue. Now first let's draw the rectangle. One corner will be 0, 0 and another corner should be 2, 2 and then a circle at the center over here and we can change the dimensions of that circle. Our radius should be 0 0.3 and let's make sure these square edges are also 2 mm and 2 mm. Okay, looks good. Say done. Next, let's create property. Elastic material. Young's model is 100 megapascal and Poisson's ratio 0.47. And I will name it as polymer as well. Say OK. Now let's create a section. Everything is default. I'm not changing anything over here. And then assign the section to the part. Let's go to assembly. Create one instance. Next step. We will create static general step. Because the strain is large, 
I am going to turn this on. These are non-linear effects. Time period I will keep it as 1 and this initial increment I will change to 0 0.1 with maximum increment also 0 0.1. Say OK. Then let's go to load. Here we have to fix this left vertical edge. For that I will use initial step. Displacement. Continue. For this we have to fix x degree of freedom that means u1 say ok and similarly for the bottom edge we will fix y degree of freedom that will be u2. Hence automatically this corner node is fixed both in x and y. Let's apply displacement boundary condition on the top here. For that we have to use step 1 say continue and on the top here we will put 0 0.3 in u2. Before applying equation constraint, let's run this model once and see if we can get the dip over here. Let's finish it up with mesh. Meshing the part. First, let's apply global seeding. This is 0 0.2. And now I will refine the seed over here around this circle by using edge seeding. And maybe here we should go to 0 0.05. Let's see apply. Yeah, this looks fine enough. Let's see how the mesh looks. Yep, looks good. I think this will serve our purpose. Make sure the element type is correct. This is plain stress elements. Say OK. Finally create a job. Let me name this job also as equation. Continue. OK. And let's submit it. It is time to put my favorite meme. A few moments later. It's done. Let's see the results. Yep, we can see a little bit dip over here. If I change this to U1, we can see the contours on left and right side are not matching. Maybe we can exaggerate this by increasing this deformation scale factor to 10. And now you can see a clear dip over here. Now let's apply equation constraint in the same model. For that we have to go to interaction and in interaction you have to choose this icon over here which says create constraint. Or another option is you can directly double click over here and then also it will create the constraint. So let me click here. Then we have to look for equation constraint. It is over here. Say continue. This is the table we have to fill. If we go back to the slide, this is the equation we want to fit in. You can see we will need two sets. So let's create those sets first. For that you have to go in this assembly and then double click on this set. Say the node. First I'm going to create master set which is just one node on the corner. So select this node over here and say done. So we have one master node set and then same process another node set. Here we will say follower. For this I will choose all the nodes on this right edge except the corner one. So let me choose all of these and say done. Let's go back to that constraint and whatever sets are defined over here those you can choose from here. So first set will be follower. Next set will be master. In the degree of freedom, we have to define either one or two. That means x degree of freedom or y. And then coefficient is nothing but the coefficient of this first term and second term. Now the first term coefficient is positive one and the second term coefficient is negative one. So for follower, it is positive one and for master, it is negative one. So let's put that over here. One and minus one and then say OK. And you can see some symbol over here which denotes this edge is now constrained. That's it. Just submit the job again. And hopefully now we will see flat vertical right edge. Again time to put my favorite meme. 20 minutes later. Done. Let's go to result. And edge is flat. If you want to compare the displacement contours, let me go back to one over here and then let's go to U1. You can see the contours match exactly on the left and right edge. If you have any questions about this, please ask them in the comment section below. If you like this video, please show your support by subscribing to this channel, which will give me motivation to create more educational videos like these. You can also go to channels playlist tab and here you can see all the videos with similar topics combined together. For example, let's say if you are interested in ANSYS tutorials, you can go to this ANSYS tutorial playlist 
and see all the videos from this playlist. All the codes and files which I use for these videos are also available for you to directly download from this channel's GitHub profile. The link of this profile is given in the description box below. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching. Thank you.